Hi guys, welcome to a making the most of video. This time I'm concentrating on the Skaven starting box, which is for, of course for the Skaven Pestilence. Let's take a look. Okay, and for those who haven't seen one of these videos before, uh, this is where I basically take um, a box and I try and make the most out of it by doing conversions and basically getting the most use out of it. It's in the name, basically. <clears throat> um, there's a couple of things I've done with this kit that I wanted to show you. Uh, the first of which is to the Plague Monks. Now, there's a little bit out of focus. Let me just quickly fix that for you. There we go. So I've built up the uh, Plague Monks, 15 of them, just as normal Plague Monks, just with the choices that I wanted. So with the old gong and a book and uh, pestilence banner and I think there's some, there we go, some bells. So 15 of them I built up like this, but I left five to one side. Now the other five are here. Now, the reason for that is that I've converted them into Plague Sensor Bearers. Now, the Plague Sensor Bearers from GW are a resin kit. If I just bring the uh, the focus in there, we can see them a bit, a bit, bit better. Uh, these haven't been finished painting, so please excuse the uh, the rough finish on them. Basically, what I did was, uh, if I show you how the arm is supposed to look, this one here. So, on the sprue, each sprue, you get four sprues in the kit for the Plague Monks, uh, five plague monks on each one you get one of these so therefore I was able to make four using this here and this is basically a plague sensor <coughs> which is the main weapon for the sensor bearers now uh, so this is just using the standard sensor bearer arm you can see there pretty basic use some bells in the other hand because I was looking for something else to put in his other hand basically um, now this one isn't ba isn't completely correct because uh, if you look at the sense of error models, they have really long um, handles on them, so they're basically supposed to be two-handed weapons. So what I did next was, is I actually took the uh, the weapon, used it along with some more of the uh, I think that was another one of those arms, twisted like cut the hand, twisted it, did some conversion work, and ended up with this situation here. So now it's become a two-handed weapon. As you can see there, he's now swinging this sensor bearer with two hands. Really simple conversion, but that's another one I've got. Uh, then I did a very similar thing here, except this time I used one of the staves from the uh, the Plague Monks. As you can see here, it's got more of a woody thing going on. Again, used exactly the same end there. This time I've gone for more of a he's dragging it along the floor look, because he's not really swinging it on this one. Um, <clears throat> again cut off the hands, change the angle, and that's what you end up with. So that's him. This one here, just using a stave, and this is actually, I think, from a corn model. I got it from a friend. I uh, used it on top of one of the normal staves. And then this here is a scroll. I just chopped it in half, stuck it on two ends of a hand that's supposed to be holding a sword, and now he's grasping a uh, a scroll. Simple conversion. Last but not least, we've got a normal stave, and the sensor is basically just droops down there and lying against the side of the uh, the thing there. Sorry, that was out of focus a little. Again, excuse the faces; they aren't painted at the moment, or at least they're in the process of being painted. Um, and that's how he looks. So those are the five. Now, <clears throat> what you end up with here is you end up with five sensor bearers, which is a valid unit, but what you end up with on the other side of the equation is 10 and 5 that aren't, because the smallest unit you can run here is uh, a 10. So you end up with 5 spare. So essentially what you're looking to do here is buy either another one of the uh, starter, box set, starter box sets, which is what most people do, um, and do the same thing again. Um, in terms of getting the extra plague sensor bearer, I found that on U YouTube, <laughs> on eBay, you can find the uh, the arm that you need to do this with for, I think it was two quid. So for two quid extra, you can get one of these. Now considering the box set of fine cast ones of these, for five, you're looking at 20 quid. That's a bargain. So for 20 quid, you can get 15 and five. 
Uh, for another 20 quid, you're going to have 30 of these and 10 of those guys. So that sorts you out. That's my plan anyway. I'm going to get uh, probably another starter box, and that will allow me to make five more of those, 15 more of those, and that gets me enough to uh, to do all sorts of configurations, maybe three units of those, one big, one small, one big unit, and then I can have two or one big unit of the uh, sensor bearers as well. So that's basically what I've done with the plague bearers. <clears throat> Next up is the letdown of the pack. <laughs> the plague claw or the uh, shock is it shotgun. Now unfortunately the way that GW's made this one, they make it very difficult to uh, to work with. So in the shotgun configuration, this is placed something like this against the end with this extra bit here on top. Um, and this bit here actually is on top of this bit there and as you can see this piece of wood here is is needed to uh, to mount it into the frame and so the work that's needed to to allow this to to all work together or I think this is maybe on top of that and then this runs across the top of it it was just a little bit too complicated and to be honest I'm, I decided at that point that I was going to be running uh, the Pestilence army and so I decided just to cut my losses and uh, I haven't, as you can see, I haven't completely uh, finished this guy because mainly because I need to work on that filler inside there, as you can see. Uh, so that'll be glued on last. I've also got some barrels that I'm putting on the back there. Uh, so yeah. Oh, and this fella will also be standing on the top. So I'm going the whole hog. I'm trying to make it look as nice as possible. Um, bit like that. So that's going to be a really cool model, but I'm keeping that bit moving so when I put it in the case it fits nice and small, as you can see. I might even leave this bit off so that it can fit in a case like that. Always thinking about transport and storage, guys. So that's that model. That's, that's the letdown of the bunch. Now we move on to the big one, the one that I haven't seen many videos, if any, on uh, <coughs> on magnetizing and making it work. That's this one here. Now I've got this set up at the moment in a rather strange configuration, as you can see. <laughs> this fella is supposed to be used with the screaming bell, which is this here. Um, and then on top of the bell, you have the old, I think he's a grace here. You have to excuse if I get the names wrong, I'm still learning the old uh, uh, Skaven units. I'm very new to Age of Sigmar, but I just wanted to show how basically this whole setup can allow you to use both together. I'm going to take this apart in a minute and show you how it all goes together. This isn't uh, this isn't glued at all either. Uh, what I did have to do for this video is glue this plank down here to to the bottom. I'm going to chop it off before I do it because none of these cross beams are actually glued. The whole thing is just pushed together. Uh, so yeah, I'm really chuffed about that. It's it's push fit. I had no idea that something like this would be push fit. It's, it's an amazing feat that uh, GW have done. Now what I'm considering is, for this fella, rather than mounting him on top of the bell, which can be quite complicated when you're talking about switching the uh, the kits up, is having him sit on there somehow. Which of course is the same platform that the Plague Monk sits on, which I've started painting up. We'll, we'll come on to him in a bit. Ah. He goes on there, basically. It's got his own little platform with which to work from, as you can see. So he goes on there. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll have seen him. I've done a conversion with him sitting on this chariot here. But I mean, if you keep him separate, you can just basically stick him on a base. Magnetize the base. You don't have to build something like this. That's just daft. Um, just stick him on a base and then he can be used by himself. Or he can be used as part of the plague furnace. So you can do dual duty. That's what this is all about. It's all about having things do dual duty and uh, and also saving some money and uh, getting some kits together that you wouldn't ordinarily either be able to afford or do. Because, I mean, while you can buy this model still, and to be honest, they probably do look better, the resin versions. Um, I'm not a fan of resin. I'd much rather have a plastic one of these any day of the week. <coughs> Even if it is an inferior looking model. So that's the setup I've got at the moment. I'm just going to take it apart so you can see how it all goes together. So uh, I'll explain the magnets after I've taken it apart. So this guy basically 
doesn't even need magnets. He's got this big gripping hand here, which essentially grips onto the side there. But you can see I have put a magnet in the base there. So that's him. Just stand him up in the background. Then what we do is take out this top bit here. And that comes out. And then that bit comes out. Now you, you, you probably cl could glue this bit. One side is quite stiff for me. So here we go. So basically what you're looking to do is you're looking to build this part of the uh, the plague furnace up. Um, and this can be all glued and painted and all that. Uh, perfectly fine. This bit here uh, doesn't need to be switched out unless you're looking to use both sides of that. Um, I have seen online somebody has magnetized the sides of this so they can swap this one way or the other, but to be honest, it's a couple of pieces of wood. Um, and these holes here are hidden by the two bits that go on it anyway, so I, I really don't see the point in doing that. So, that's the model as it is. So you've seen it with this on it. What we've also got, the bit that takes its place, is a bunch of plague monks, as you can see. There's a magnet in the bottom. They magnetise on there, like that. So they sit on there, and they do exactly the same job as this, but with a slightly longer chain. So you may have noticed that the ball was swung way up. Um, of course, he's got a shorter chain. So it changes the angle. And then here, have I glued these? No, I haven't. What I've done in here, as you can see, I've put a couple of pieces of plastic card in there, and I drilled a hole, and I've stuck a 2 by one disc magnet. So it's 2 inches wide, 1 inch deep. Inch? Millimetres. Bloody hell. So it's two millimeters wide, one millimeter deep. And all I've done for this whole thing, I've just used two millimeter, two millimeter wide, one millimeter deep magnets. Same deal going on there. That's the same there. And that's the same there as well. So they go on there. This push fits there. You don't really need magnets. It's a, it's a big enough block to fit in the gap, as you can see. Uh, what I do need to do first is show you this here. So, this is the all-important doodad that allows it all to work. So what you end up with is you end up with these two bits here, and there's a, basically two little bits of rod that stick out at the end. And what I did was is I chopped those two bits of rod and replaced them with two magnets. Luckily, the bits of rod are actually two millimetres thick, so that's perfect. It fits with the magnets I've used, and that's the deal we've got going on here. Now, what these do is they go around the tops of these two bits here. So the top of the bell, as you can see, there. you also notice that there's magnets in the end of the bell, and that is to go... Nope, that's the opposing one. To go in these. So, like that. Um, but this has to go on there first. So we'll take this apart. I'll show you how it goes together. You'll notice that there's a little notch there, and there's also a little notch there. So that goes on like that, and it's sort of there's a little bit of wiggle, but it locks in place. And you do the same to the other side. <coughs> Excuse me, froggy my throat. And that basically gets stuck there now. And there's a little bit of wiggle, but that's perfectly fine. Then what we do is we mount it in its frame. If I get the sides right, there we go. If it doesn't fall apart, <laughs> like that, you end up with this configuration, and the bell can swing. And I've done it the other way around again, haven't I? So what I've done is I've ended up configuring it so that it's the other way around. You notice the bell hangs centrally at the moment. So what you have to do is just pull it, and then disconnect these two magnets, put the hole from that chain on, and then clip that back. And then as long as your bell stays in place, there we go. So now we've got some monks uh, connected to the uh, the magnets in the top there, pulling on the bell. In exactly the same way, we can grab these guys, pull them off, shove Mr. Retogre in, and then do exactly the same thing with his chain. Move that up. And there we go. Jobs are good. As easy as that, and then, like I say, this guy doesn't need magnets. It, it might be tempting to put magnets down on his feet, to be honest, just to hold it against 
but it does a fairly good job of holding it there. And with his with where his hand is, it actually hides the magnet fairly well once it's in the right place as well. Like that. And that's basically what I've done to uh, to make this work as two kits. It's it's a really simple conversion. You've got uh, magnets holding the edge of the bell or the uh, the swinging sensor. Just in the ends here. I just drilled two holes, stuck them in the ends. You've got magnets in these bits here, which I'm going to glue now that I've shown you guys. I was waiting until I'd made this video. Uh, magnets in the, the end of this bit here, which is the all-important bit there. And then just one down the bottom here, which holds the, uh, the plague mugs, because these don't have any kind of hooking mechanism to hold them onto this plank. Uh, and, and that is that. And when you're done, you basically have the ability to use both of those kits. Now, the bit that I haven't done is I did see somebody magnetize this fella on top of the bell. Because, of course, he is supposed to fit right on top of that bell. And then his back hand is supposed to hold on to something like, like that. So it's supposed to be, like, attached to that top bit. Um, and while you can use this and push it on so it stays like that and so his hand is on the end there um, I don't know I don't think I'll be using it as the screaming bell all that often if at all um, and to be honest I much kind of prefer to have the hero down here rather than than all the way up there and if if to be honest I would probably glue him up here on the bell if I wanted to use him in that way well, that does basically negate your ability to uh, put him on his own base in the same way as I've done with the Plague Priest. But you get the idea. So there is, there's more options here. You could potentially put magnets in the bottom of his feet, put them on the inside of the bell, and then magnetize him to the top there. But I, I wouldn't be happy with, uh, with how well he'd sit on the top there, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so hopefully... This has helped somebody out in figuring out how to magnetize this beast. Like I say, half of it is push fit with these two bits pushing into the actual frame. And then it's just, I was, I was really surprised at how simple this kit was to do. I was expecting it to be an absolute pain to get working properly. But it was a, an absolute pleasure in the end. I was really, really chuffed. So that is basically what I've done. So from the basic kit, I've managed to get the plague furnace and the screaming bell. I've managed to get um, a Plague Priest as well as the Plague Furnace, so I can run both of those. Though, depending on who you're playing against, not on the same, t not at the same time, depending on how finicky they are about having the Plague, plague Priest on the furnace itself. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't feeling up to the task of uh, getting the <coughs> the old catapult working. I have seen some conversions where people have basically put the, I'll just show you here, they made it so that when you flip this over, it has the shock gun on the underside, like that. Um, so when it's an upside down like that, it's a shotgun, and then when it's that way up, it's uh, a catapult. But to be honest, for me personally, that ruins the aesthetic of the, uh, of the model far too much for me to, uh, for me to do that. Call me precious, but <laughs> it was a step too far. Let's put it that way. Um, so I've not managed to do anything with that, but what I have managed to do is make the Plague Sensor Bearers, which of course are an expensive kit, and they're fine cast, so there's going to be problems with the resin as well. And I've also managed to make 15 Plague Monks. So I was really chuffed. I, I opened this, this box, and I was really happy to find that I was able to make lots of different things, and... Uh, and fill out much more of the war scrolls than I was expecting to when I first bought it. So, colour me happy. I am one happy kablams right now. Um, yes, so I may as well end it now because I've been talking for far too long. Like I say, thank you very much for watching. Um, catch up with me in between videos on these things over here. I'll be posting up some pictures, or have been posting up some pictures, of these fellas uh, as I've been painting them. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to paint them up to the same level as the Plague Priest, but um, 
I'm pretty happy with how they look. The, to be honest, the, the lighting in here isn't making them look great, but um, they look awesome, and I'm really happy with the, the bases as well. And what you'll see on the horizon is probably another one of these starter boxes coming through the door, um, and so I'll be doing this all over again. Right, I have definitely rambled on far too long now. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you found this video useful and you've, you're going to be able to make use of the different conversions I've done and use them to both make savings in money and time. Not necessarily time, but yes. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. I'll get out of here. Thanks very much, guys.